two weeks from today, Kings basketball. Yes. Kings Lakers. This time it's, well, it's not for real. It's pretty, it's, it's not for real, but it's kind of real. <laughs> October 3rd. Whitey, you, uh, as usual, uh, give, give amazing perspectives. And I, I thought you did because we've talked about this, uh, about all the hype. There's just, there's a buzz building. It's a king of buzz. And I'm so jaded. And people, I heard you yesterday. I just, I, get out of here with the buzz. I don't care. But you said something that really, really w- was smart. Uh, it, it's not that, usually the buzz comes from within. Yes. Like, like, like I call it the Harry Giles buzz where, you know, you, you know, people on the team are saying Harry Giles might be the best guy on the floor. And then fans hop on it and poor Harry. But this is coming from outside. This is coming from other journal- national yeah. journalists, national journalists. Mm-hmm. They usually poop on us. Mm-hmm. So it is a little different. There's I guess. There are genuine reasons to be optimistic. The thing that's most interesting to me is, you know, the, the Kings, since they've had current ownership, they've in many ways tried to emulate the Warriors, yeah. right? Get that guy that was on the Warriors. Sure. His coach was on the Warriors. Yeah. Um, I think the one thing they failed to recognize about the Warriors and failed to uh, – try to uh, emulate is that culture which is based on and you said it earlier defense yes as great as the Warriors are shooting the basketball um unprecedented three-point shooting we know that but their championships were built on defense yes they were a great defensive team and still they were last year and that's where the kings have been so sorely lacking and when you have a team that can't guard anybody right but you want to push tempo and in addition to that, you can't guard anybody. You're pushing tempo and you turn the ball over. It's a recipe for getting your head caved in every night. So at least now it appears that the front office, the Kings as an organization are recognizing we're going to have to build whatever we're doing on a foundation of defense. Not easy to do. I, I'm not sure Sabonis and Fox, how good can they be defensively? Right. I don't know. But at least again, and it's a painstaking process for this franchise for whatever reason. I think they're at least approaching the right track if they're not, in fact, on it. I think they're on the right track. I completely agree with you. But you also said, you said it in the beginning, they was playing defense. You have 40% of your starting lineup and your two all-stars. Neither of them are plus defenders. And neither of them are three-point shooters. I'm talking about Fox and Sabonis. They're both capable of doing both at times. That's not who they are. And so you're, you're talking about your two biggest stars that are not plus three point shooters or defenders. You, you're already behind the eight ball there. Um, and you talk about the Warriors. I, I, I always find this incredibly interesting because if, if that's the case and they want to look at all the, the Warrior comparisons, then we're getting pretty close to, I, I keep coming back. As I land this plane, Whitey, I keep coming back to the idea. I can't shake the fact. I can't shake the idea that De'Aaron Fox is Monte Ellis. In my head, and people get really angry when I say that. But when you look at them at 24 years old, Monte Ellis actually averaged two more points than De'Aaron. He averaged one more full steal. Same blocks. Same exact assists. A tenth of a rebound off. What? See, now, as you say that, I understand where you're going. I don't know if you have everything up there. Uh, shot attempts per, you know, field goals per 36, 48. I would think Monte is more of a just, he liked to shoot. He's a really good player. 22 he's pretty to, fearless. Tw- uh, if you go per 36, and I agree with you. That's why this really surprised me. Monte Ellis per 36, 19.1 field goals attempted. De'Aaron Fox per 36, 18.9 field goals wow. attempted. Okay. It is ridiculous how similar in, in their year in their 24 age year, how exactly the same they are. And when you look at both of them as well, and, and again, it, nothing's ever perfect, but when you, when you try to put things in historical context, do you, you remember this too? Now, Monte Ellis was go in his seventh season with golden state. When he got traded, De'Aaron Fox is going into, I believe his sixth season with Sacramento Warrior fans were fiercely protective of Monte. Ellis. Oh yeah, that was all they had, and he was loyal to them. And you may remember my literally my favorite NBA clip is the retirement ceremony of Chris Mullen when Joe Lacob, the brand new owner who just gotten the team from Chris Cohan, goes out. It was right after the Ellis trade for Andrew Bogut, and he gets booed off the floor. weren't the Warriors here, by the way, when that trade went down? Yes, they were. That's yeah. a great memory. Yeah. They one hundred percent were. Yeah. 
Lacob gets booed off the floor. Rick Barry has to come on and mm-hmm. say, guys, come on, show some class. What's wrong with you? He's doing his best. This is a man I've known for some time. <laughs> right, for like a week. That I'm not saying Fox is, is going to go the same way, but I feel like this is a make or break year for him with Sacramento. I really, really do. Yeah. Another thing, more background on that. Sure. The fans going crazy uh, during that retirement ceremony. The Kings, excuse me, the Warriors had announced recently at that time that they were also leaving Oakland. That was part was of part it. Part of it. No, you're yeah, right. It's like they're leaving Oakland, yes. traded Monte. Who are these guys? Who are these owners? And of course, they've, they've proven they, they know what they're doing. I'm with you on De'Aaron Fox. To me, one of the reasons he takes so many shots to watch him play is like he has no faith in the guys around. And nor, nor should he. Yeah. I so, get it. Yeah. And Monte's more like, I'm the guy, give me the ball. And Fox at times like, if I don't do it, no one's doing it. Yeah. So, you know, he does have better defenders around him, and he has the wherewithal to play defense. I think he has the tools to play defense to be a better defender. There was a stat out there. I, Mitchell can guard people. We know that. Well, 100%. And, well, yeah. and that's the thing. The question that me, you know, this is a question go back to last year. And, again, um, th- this also makes people angry, and I don't want to do it. But the question is, let's make people angry. Well, you got a max player in De'Aaron Fox, and this is why he this is why it is all on him this year. No pressure, but you're a max guy. There's gonna be pressure. And the question there is, are the Kings better with De'Aaron Fox at the point, or are they better with trading De'Aaron Fox and having Davion Mitchell at the point, plus what they get back for De'Aaron Fox? And I promise you, if De'Aaron comes out of the box this year like he did last year, which was horrible, he came out of the box terrible. Starts to turn it around, then he gets the ankle injury. He's out for weeks with the ankle injury. Comes back the day after Tyrese Halliburton's traded and just goes on a ballistic tear after that. The whole thing was weird last year with Mm -hmm. him. He's got, this is on him so much. It's on his shoulders. He has the best team surrounding him he's ever had. I think this is when we find out if De'Aaron Fox is going to be a long-term king or they've got to move and, 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 and turn the page on. On the one hand, I think he's hard to trade. We saw that last year. Right. That's one reason they traded Albert. Yes. Just the market for Fox wasn't what they hoped it would be. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Because teams look at all the things you're talking about. That said, I think if De'Aaron Fox this year can buy in defensively Mm -hmm. and really work on that aspect of his game, if he can learn to trust like, okay, these guys are all right. Yeah. And I think we saw that later in the year. Yep. He played better. I think he trusts Sabonis. He feels like this is a pretty good player. Mm -hmm. So I think there's every chance we see the best Fox we've seen to this point, but I think you're right. This team's going to, continue down that path that we agree they're finally on the right path. Um, a lot of that hinges on De'Aaron Fox and how well he plays this year. Despite the fact that they got DeMontis Sabonis, I still feel like this is De'Aaron Fox's team and for no other reason because he he's, along with being half of their two best players, he's also been here the longest. For me, a huge key, and I'd love to know how this works behind the scenes. Mike Brown's got to come out and say, I'm a defense guy. And the guys that are going to start are going to be the guys that play defense. And he has to have the leash from Monty McNair, and let's be honest, from Vivek Ranadive. I'm not saying the Kings should start the year with Fox on the bench and Davion Mitchell starting. I would love to know, though, that Mike Brown has not only the leash to do it, but the willingness to say, De'Aaron, you've got to play defense at this level, and if I don't see it, I will give Davion those minutes because you said it. De'Aaron Fox is a plus defender when he's engaged. You don't want to play them both at the same time? I, 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 I think you can in spots. I know that's something that people have been banging around quite a bit this offseason. I think you can in spots. I think you can depending on matchups. But, no, I don't think a, a six-foot and a six-four backcourt uh, bodes well long-term, especially defensively, mm-hmm. especially when you don't have uh, a Gobert type guy behind you to, to help with the turn style. Brown, it's going to be Brown's problem. Listen. I don't have a stat in front of me. I wish I did because it was a great one. It was something. You got uh, all your Monte Ellis stats. I, just read some of those. I, so there's a stat where De, uh, when De'Aaron Fox is guarding players in the top 35 and scoring in the NBA, it's like his defensive rating is almost double how good it is when he's not. He gets fired up for the good matchups, and you've seen it. You've seen him lock people down before. Maybe if he were sitting here, Whitey, he'd say, guys, I hear you. But I've had such little to work with around me that I don't have the energy to do it on both sides. I don't know. I don't Mm -hmm. know that, but that's kind of a valid excuse. I don't know if he has that one this year. I think they're set up for him to have every chance to be the best player he's been. As far as Mike Brown, it's really interesting, isn't it? He's a defensive guy, right? How do we know that? Well, he was a defensive coach at Golden State. 
Um, he inherited a really good defensive <laughs> right, team there. Right, right. And he inherited right. Ron Adams' system. And, yeah. and, you know, so it's not like he went in there and built that. Well, there's defense. Draymond Green's there, too. Yeah. It's funny yeah. Because when Michael Malone was here, he got fired in part because he didn't know how to run an offense, and he was a defense guy. And then magically he goes to Denver, and they're always in the top five in offense, and they have yeah. a Jokic guy. Yeah. Funny how players define what kind of a coach right. a coach is. Right. I think there are more questions about Mike Brown. He's a great guy and a wonderful coach. But I, I still think there are more questions about him as a coach I agree. Than, than you'd think there would be. I 1 trillion percent agree. We will take a break. We